Hi, my name is Dr. John Sopola. This is the Allstate solo for KMEA for the alto saxophone, the slow version. This particular piece requires us to play some ornaments, to use our articulation in, uh, in one particular passage in the third bar a little bit uniquely, and it also requires us to subdivide uh, 30 second notes. So let's deal first with um, our sound. So when we form an embouchure on the saxophone, we're going to say the beginning of the letter V, as in like this. We pull the saxophone neck strap up high enough to let the saxophone fall onto the lower lip and close the corners around without distorting any of the normal formation. We take a nice breath in from below. And we let our top teeth rest on the mouthpiece without biting. So we're trying to just keep everything here closed enough to produce a decent sound but without biting too much or actually at all just enough firmness to have a relaxed enough embouchure. Uh, we're going to start out with a dynamic that is marked piano but we want to have actually the sound present enough and then also it, once you start the sound and establish it it's okay if you use a little bit of vibrato and sometimes the vibrato can start right away and sometimes it can go towards the end of the note. So for instance and the way, let me just back up a step, to, to play vibrato on the saxophone, I essentially keep my top teeth on the mouthpiece, and I let my lower lip say wah-wah, but without my, both my lips going wah-wah, just the lower lip, wah-wah-wah, and I do this all while I'm blowing air, so, and very gently. you'll find that the slightest movement of the lower lip on the reed will vary the sound. An extreme version of this, it would be if you were to re play a note on the saxophone and really loosen up a lot. And what I was doing was keeping a steady airflow but really reducing the pressure of my lower lip on the reed and then bringing it back up again. Vibrato, in a way, is a, a, a much narrower version of that, and a much more artistic version of that. The way we progress towards having it sound very artistic and very natural, like a singer, will be to practice in different rhythms. So I might practice in eighth notes, for instance, and I might slow, that's, uh, let's see, if we slow our tempo down to 60. practice triplets and then sixteenths. And once we're getting control of that to play different rhythms, then what I do is I just let my ear be the guide. And oftentimes I just want to establish a pure sound and let the vibrato just sort of color the end of the note. So, but I do vary it according to the music. So vibrato is a subtle thing, but it, it requires some methodical rhythmic practice. Um, in measure three, we have some grace notes, and we want to make sure that we're staying exactly in time. So what I would suggest on this is to practice, let me start a metronome, say, at about 70, just to give us a slower tempo. So that's the rhythm. The high C is, th is three counts because an eighth note is going to get a beat in this piece, not a quarter note. And after you're able to play the actual rhythm here, uh, then go ahead and put your grace notes in. And I like to put them once at one at a time. So, and, and uh, having beat three, my B flat. By the way, I'm playing the B flat with a biz key. First key like this, and the biz key like that. I'm going to put the grace note in right before it. very subtle, gentle articulation with my tongue, very light, to get that G tongued. Now notice though, you have those four sixteenth notes after your held G, so you're going to have to re-tongue your G. Is what is actually happening, but we're going to have to get that to happen with the metronome at a faster tempo. So. The way to work this is work this with your metronome slowly until finally you have the, the uh, tempo up to where an eighth note is like this and you're able to get your tongue in there. Then 
but don't do that until you can actually get it nice and slow. Um, the, six, the 30 second notes in the second line, let's take it again at a slower tempo, I'll put it at 70. <laughs> And in this measure, don't forget that your E natural carries through the whole bar. So in that second grouping of notes, there's an E natural, not an E flat. And then I, I, after your B natural occurs in the beginning of this measure, there's a high B flat, and I slide my finger on my B key down to the biz so that when I go to play my high B flat, I just use a biz key there. So that's my little trick for that. Uh, don't forget that, uh, let's see, oh, I was going to jump down... Let me jump to the second line first. You have a B natural that trills, and we have these three side keys. So hold the B, trill the middle key. I think in the version that I just played, I might have played the trill a little bit too quickly. So if we go... You might hold the B first and then trill a few times. The, the, the main thing is to avoid accenting on the B. So uh, as long as you're not accenting, you can leave the speed of the trill up to yourself in deciding on the context. And that next measure, make sure you're counting on the C. One and two and a three, like that. Uh, and then in the third line, we have some six, a group of six, and it has a big tie over it with dots and so I just lightly tongue those I don't make a, an accent and I don't uh, really separate them I just want a nice little sort of a bounce on each of those notes so I do make contact with the reed and each of those triplets gets a beat so from the beginning of that bar here third line second measure in making a distinct difference between the triplets and the sixteenths that follow. I'm counting one and two and a three, four, lolly six, lolly one and two and three and four, etc. So just making sure that you're not playing your tri your sixteenth notes that follow the same speed as your triplets right before it. Um, again, at the at the very end, make sure that that D you leave a little space after the D, but the C does come in on beat two. So D C, and then. It's okay if you slow this down ever, ever so slightly at the end, just to give it a little sense of finality. The last thing is make sure that you use some dynamics. This is your chance to really show off how musically you can play. And so if it says piano, the way to play piano is to have something that contrasts that. So make sure, like I said early on, that you're playing the very first note of the piece at a dynamic level that's comfortable, that you get a good resonant sound. But when you get to that third, that third measure and you have a forte, that should sound louder than what you played in the beginning. So piano doesn't mean necessarily ultra, ultra soft. It does mean softer, but compared to something. And so as long as the forte is a beautiful sound and the piano is a beautiful sound, you can just vary your volume like this. I hope that's helpful and I wish you all the best of luck.